The timeline is where you're going to be putting a fair amount of your attention. The timeline holds all your frames, layers, folders, and guides you put into your animation. Everything at the top of the timeline will be on top of everything else on the canvas. You can stack a million circles on each other, a million layers each, but if there's a red circle at the very top layer, that red one will always be first when you click that stack of circles. A useful pair of hotkeys are the period and comma keys. Period goes forward a frame, and comma goes backward a frame. Useful for navigating the timeline. This is the frame rate for your animation here. This tells you what frame you are on. Below it, you can see the seconds that you're on, which will be different depending on the FPS you use. You can click on the frames and drag it in either direction to go forward or backward in your animation. This is the keyframe header. It shows you what frame you're looking at. There are buttons for making layers, folders, and deleting folders on the timeline. A layer is something that you'll be constantly adding. They stack on top of each other, so whatever is on the top layer will cover the layer below it. You know, like an onion. So the way you would animate is have a character on a layer, the backgrounds on a layer, which can be further separated by having a sky on a layer, background elements on a layer, foreground on the layer, etc. Get used to the idea of making layers, as they are very important. Like we briefly mentioned last time, if you have a bunch of objects on a single keyframe on one layer, you can right-click and click Distribute to Layers to separate it for you. You can also merge layers by highlighting, right-clicking the layer selection, and clicking Merge Layers. You can also shift around positions on a single layer by right-clicking and click Arrange, and click Bring Forward or Send Backward. You can just do Control Up or Down to do so as well. You can also bring Front and Send to Back or use Control Shift Up or Down. You can also lock things if you don't want to move them the same way. Speaking of lock, you'll notice these things on the timeline next to the layer, an eye with a line going through it, and a lock symbol. You can click the lock indicator here to lock said layer, and then boom, locked in place. You can't move anything in it. Useful for when you don't want to move sprites or the background while animating. The eye with a line going through it is to hide things. You click it, and then everything on that layer is hidden. Again, it's useful for backgrounds when we get into it, but generally useful to hide anything you don't want to see at the moment as well. To make sure they don't appear in the final export, go back into Publish Settings, and disable Include Hidden Layers. If you want to hide or lock everything, if you have a lot of layers, and then unlock or unhide specific ones, just click the main icon themselves at the top of the timeline like so. Folders hold layers so you can organize them. Put layers in folders, name the folder, name the layers, they work the same as library folders. If you double click on a layer, you can edit its properties. Like we mentioned last time, clicking the header and pressing F5 adds a frame vertically to every layer. Shift F5 clears every frame vertically instead. Onion Skin lets you see the frames before and after a keyframe the header is on. Edit multiple frames allows you to highlight multiple frames, and edit them all in the canvas at the same time. It'll look like this in the canvas if you're editing multiple frames in an animation. Both the Onion Skin and Edit Multiple Frames feature depends on how far the range of frames is from your frame header. Here's Far Range versus Very Short Range. You can edit the range by selecting either Onion Skin or Edit Multiple Frames, and dragging the symbol on both sides of the header either further away or bringing it closer. You can also change the color of the onion skin for future and past frames. In Anime 2020, you would right-click the onion skin button and go into Advanced Settings and change the color there for past and future frames. In past versions of Flash, you would go to Edit at the toolbar at the top of the program window and go down into Preferences. It should be in the General section of the Preferences menu, and it should give you the option to change the color for past, present, and future frames for onion skin. This button lets you enable a loop between your keyframes if you want to keep rewatching a specific section repeatedly. If you press the loop button and adjust the range to specific frames you want looped like with the onion skin range, it'll loop and replay that sequence until you press the stop button. You can also drag it around if you click the colored range in the middle. Center frame takes the frame that you're on and puts it in the center of your view on the timeline. Guide layers are invisible layers that you can put whatever you want into and it won't show up in the exported animation. They're used to draw guides for yourself on the canvas. Motion guides are similar in that you can draw an arc, a loop-de-loop, -loop, etc. And if you tween an object from one end of the drawing to the other, it'll follow the guide that you drew. That can be explained more in the section about tweening. There's also a mode in the timeline that makes it so you can only see the layer you're actively working on at that moment, called Active Layer Mode. You can activate it by clicking this icon here. After that, your flash will hide all other layers except the one you're working on.